Hello boys and girls, welcome to another Jeep video. Before I say anything else, I need to make a correction. This is a 2020 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon JLU. Apparently two-door Jeeps are JL and four-door four are JLUs. Anyways, now if you've seen the supercharger install videos, that was done kind of in between. I kind of dropped everything, whatever I was doing, and started doing the supercharger only because it's, it's, it's more interesting than, you know, installing fenders or suspension or whatever. This video is going to be about the lift kit, which is a 3 inch by Terraflex. I think it's Terraflex. You're going to see a box. Uh, on one of the boxes it will say, I think, Terraflex. Anyway, so front suspension for now, Falcon adjustable shocks, longer sway bar links, springs, and drop brackets. I'm going to have to split this into probably two parts, which should cover the whole, the front and rear suspension lift. All right, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment as always, and enjoy the video. Look at all this stuff. Okay, starting here, this is, no, this is the skid plate, yeah, this is the skid plate, this, all this is part of the lift kit, springs, some kind of brackets, check this out, these are shocks here, fully adjustable, these are nice, by the way, these are just seat covers, this is a harness for something, these two both long boxes those are running boards they're going to be uh, automatic they're going to be going in and out on their own this big box is the rear bumper i'm guessing rear tail lights at least that's what they look like some kind of uh, step for the rear i'm guessing these big boxes are fenders there's two more inside the jeep and more lights i'm not even taking any of these out uh, out of the boxes yet but this is that uh, big LED light that's gonna get mounted on the roof most likely maybe on the front bumper don't know and there's more coming too it's gonna be a lot of work I don't even know where to start I honestly don't know where to start I don't want it to be to have a case where I install something and then I open up a box and that part is gonna go in uh, more or less where the where I just installed the new part and I'm gonna have to take some stuff out so I gotta kind of make a plan uh, there's still the supercharger uh, coming the front bumper and I, honestly I don't even know it would be nice to to have everything out and uh, compare see but uh, I had to take my car out out of this garage and park it somewhere else just so I can have everything out Anyways, um, oh yeah, there's still the exhaust that's not here. Maybe, maybe I should start with the lift kit. What do you think? All right, decided to go with the lift kit first. I got bump stops, longer sway bar links, brackets, bolts, nuts, washers, all kinds of things, uh, much longer springs, and three sets of instructions. So whatever they say at this point, what I'm going to do is remove this fender and the wheel well uh, cover this plastic thing just to make my life easier they're asking for uh, removing the square bar links the springs the shocks and supporting the front axle so we're, we're doing the front uh, for now obviously I took the wheels off so let's start with the fender Okay, let's take a closer look what's behind door number one this looks like an air compressor We've got access to the headers or one of them catalytic converter right here 
What's nice about this is everything is accessible. A lot of room to work with. Here's the other side. Your brake booster, another catalytic converter right here. That's probably the AC compressor here. That's your power steering. Okay, so now what needs to be done is we need to somehow support the front axle on its side here and here and unfortunately I don't have tall jack supports so I'm going to, to work on the car while it's much lower unless I can figure something out All right, axle supported. I cannot lock the, the lift. So it's gonna have to sit like this for uh, a bit without it being locked. For a little bit, it's okay. But you wanna avoid, you wanna always use your lock. Okay, so now, now I'm gonna remove the sway bar uh, link altogether. These are 18s. Loosen up uh, different uh, suspension components and remove this trek bar bolt. This is a 21. So two 18s and a 21. Okay, so this was the passenger side. On the driver's side, you're only removing the sway bar link. Now, same on both sides. Brake lines, 15 and the 10 mil. Take these both brackets off. Now we are removing these brackets all together. So this, this lower one needs to be pried open. Okay, this may, I don't know, is this, no, this is steel. It feels like steel. And this one, there is a clip on the other side, just use a flat screwdriver. This one's, this one's easy. Okay, coming back to the driver's side. I'm gonna remove this breather hose from the front differential. There's a clamp and remove this harness here, unplug this and remove it with this clip right here. Basically what you're doing is removing everything that might get caught while all of this, the front, moves down. So all, the whole front axle, it's gonna come down. So anything that will just, you know, pay attention, or anything that's still connected, just remove it, make sure that you don't damage anything. Pull on the white clip. This guy here, move it back and then press on the white tab here and remove the plug. Okay, back to the passenger side. Only loosening the control arm bolts. So this is your uh, upper control arm, this is going to be your lower control arm. This is a 21, then on the back of this is a 24, and an 18 in there, and 18 here. So we're only loosening these up. Now that I look inside here, this nut is welded to this stopper, whatever you want to call this thing. So you gotta get it from the other side and there is a cover which is held up by two 10 mil bolts. One is here on the bottom, the other one is on top. This is what I'm talking about, upper and lower bolt, both 10 mil bolts. And now I got access to the 18 mil. Okay, this one I'm gonna have to hold the bolt 
on the other side with an 18 mil wrench. That was the upper control arm. Now the lower. Okay, a little correction. Remove the upper and lower control arms out completely. I left the lower one attached to the front, so it's kind of hanging here along with the upper one, but the upper one is only hanging on this harness. This is a light, so it's okay. It's hanging on this harness over here on this clip. Do the same thing on the other side because of these brackets. This bracket on the passenger side will install, it's going to look like this. And it's going to bring those control arms lower. Now I'm going to remove the shock, both 18 mil bolts. There's an 18 mil nut on the back of the bottom one. Now I'm going to raise the Jeep so I can take the springs out. Check if there's anything else that's connected or getting stretched for no reason. It's fine, we're good. Still need a little more. Plenty of slack on the brake lines. I'm just gonna go a bit more. So these are the bump stops and you want to stack these up because we are doing a 3 inch lift here this says 2 inch half and a half so that's 3 the longer springs are for the front and they are both the same I don't see a, an L or an R on uh, any of them and the part number is the same okay I have removed this harness unclipped it basically from here and, un and unplugged it. It was getting close, had a little bit of room, but just I need to drop it a bit more just to install those longer springs in place. So just do yourself a favor and disconnect this harness as well. All right, get it as high as you can, but in my case, the watch the drive shift because as the drive shift angles down it will pull the axle with it so watch it because the whole axle started going back and it's uh, tilting my jack stands so just keep an eye on that and you gotta I got I don't know probably two feet over here all right grab your right spring upper part of the spring first now they say to use zip ties to zip tie the bump stops to the spring. I found it easy, I already did the other side by the way, found it easy to just hold it and slide it in with the spring. Now there is only one spot the spring will go, so find that spot right there. I'm going to adjust it uh, later on both springs as as we compress the springs. So now that the bump stop is in, I'm gonna take this Allen bolt. This is a six by the way. Drop it inside. Using this tool to hold the nut won't drop because of the built-in washer. Now I gotta say the driver's side was much easier. It didn't have this provision for the for the track bar. It's gonna be more difficult to aim the nut to the bolt but using this allen key here and patience think we are in yes we are all right okay that's a, a lock nut so it's gonna get tight with just a few turns so you want to put your ratchet on try to lock in place that 
special tool holding the nut. Watch your drop light drop. Maybe that's why it's called the drop light. This is a bit tricky. Tool on the bottom there it doesn't want to stay in place in one spot. Okay, there we go. The tool is still in place there. Okay, I'm gonna <clears throat> remove the ratchet and use my trusty torque wrench. This torques down to 12. But the trick here is to go slow. If you're gonna go fast, watch this. Okay, see I already reached 12. But I bet you it needs more tightening. So if I go slow, see it's only at 10. So you want to go slow and get it up to 12. And this should be good. All right, time for this fancy schmancy drop bracket is what they call it. It's gonna go in in between the frame here and in between just basically put it in and pull it towards you it's only attach it's only going to be touching the frame on this side here you'll see what i mean in a second so what i'm going to do just to hold it in place i'm going to just run through the lower bolt Only have two arms after all and I'm gonna work on the upper side of it with this stuff here the longest bolt that they provide in the kit this 16 knot I believe 16 mil maybe 18 I don't know so you got two small ones and one medium one now the small one will go in between the frame and the bracket so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold it up there now I'm holding the spacer with the bolt now okay now that's in i'm holding the bracket with the bolt here you can see it move i'm gonna grab the medium spacer from the bottom using patience again it's not gonna be easy i can't use a magnet because this is aluminum it would be much easier if this was steel but it's better that it's aluminum and won't rust okay now that's in drive the bolt in some more now the small spacer again so i've done the other side first second time it's much easier so these nuts they're only going to go in a few threads because if you can see they are lock washers they're squashed now back to the bottom bolt i'm going to take that out you can only access this from the bottom here so what i'm going to do i'm going to take it out basically so this this part of the frame needs to go in between the spacer and the bracket so it can be a bit tricky but to make your life easier keep a flat screwdriver handy now you can use the screwdriver to actually adjust it as you remember you're adjusting the bracket and the spacer and that's it this the screwdriver will make your life easier and this is a 24 and that's it the whole point of this is to bring these lower control arms lower okay now the shocks all right using this longest factory bolt and this bulge on the bottom this bulge facing the front of the jeep so upper one first now i'm not tightening anything up yet that's going to get done when everything is back together so i'm going to leave this hanging for now and the next step is to lower the jeep and adjust as it comes together probably two more people would be useful one guy on the lift and two guys on each side watching and holding the lower control arms everything else needs to come together and the springs so that may take a while so that's what i'm gonna do now 
before I start lowering it, I'm going to reinstall the upper control arms with the factory bolt and leave that loose as well. Okay, let's roll. Here, check this out. I'm going to use the upper control arm to hold the lower control arm. 